Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. The Seed with Mission as directed. And don't let there be any mistakes. Neutralize. Neutralize. No! Just follow my orders. We won't fail. result of Project HOS-1. Seventy percent of my body has been bionically reconstructed. Go after him with the laser. And welcome back. So you just heard the trailer for our movie review. Oh, this is Hands of Steel. It's this number 18 in the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Um, let's get into this one because this one is fucking bonkers. According to the 88 Films blurb on their website, it says Paco Quarac, played by Daniel Green of Deadly Intruder, is the product of insane industrialist Francis Turner, played by John Saxon of A Nightmare on Elm Street. 70% android, 30% human, Paco was created to deserve one purpose, to assassinate an experimental scientist who has found ecological ways out of much of Turner's business. When Paco realises that the target is a good man, he is unable to fulfil his mission. With the hunter, now the hunted, Turner, Turner sends an army after his once prized creation, but it's going to take more than that to stop Paco Querac. From the legendary Sergio Martino, director of Torso, comes Hands of Steel, a rip-roaring slice of A's action adventure with an all-Italian twist, not to mention gratuitous scenes of arm wrestling. Co-starring Janet Argon of Say the Living Dead, George Eastman of Absurd, Claudio Casanelli of 
suspected death of a minor in his final on-screen performance and featuring another knockout score from Goblin's Claudio Simonetti. Hands of Steel is essential viewing for any fans of Italian exploitation and finally makes his HD premiere thanks to 88 Films. Well, oh, just so much right about this movie. So much right just from this blog pier. I'll tell you what's right about this movie. The fact that, one, you've got Sergio Martino directing it. Sergio Martino, I think, is getting a bit of a renaissance now amongst um, cinephiles in that I think he put out a ton of really, really interesting, really cinematic, gorgeous work in the 70s and 80s, which has been reappraised now with the attention kind of moving across to the Italian genre cinema and Blu-ray HD releasing of them. We're finding a lot more companies putting out Martino stuff and I think that's kind of fucking awesome. I think uh, George Eastman always plays a fucking great villain. He's great in this movie. I think um, Janet Agron is is also really good in this movie. Daniel Green is playing basically his best impression of like a cross between Arnold Schwarzenegger in Commando and Arnold Schwarzenegger in The Terminator. Um, John Saxon, a limited role in the movie, but he's a, once again, he's a wonderful, kind of classy villain uh, here as well. The special features on the disc were a new HD transfer from the original negative, which actually looks pretty cool. Uh, restored English soundtrack, which sounded bitching on my soundbar. Uh, Atomic Martino, it's an interview with director Sergio Martino, which is over 40 minutes. Well worth checking out if you're a fan of Martino. I've always found Martino to be kind of blunt about things. He, he doesn't sugarcoat things, and I think that's what kind of makes it awesome. But uh, let's let's unpack some of that synopsis from this movie. Um, yeah, the synopsis is listed on the 8 Films website. It's a bit more coherent than what I actually saw. I get a feeling that we're supposed to piece together a lot of the stuff that we have not seen before and a lot of stuff that comes after. And I find that, I, I imagine that's just one of those things with uh, Italian exploitation cinema where they just make jumps in narrative and you, you kind of have to go with it even if it doesn't make sense or even if it's not explained all that well. And it's not in this movie. Like, right from the start, Paco, you know, arrives to kill this... Um, this, you know, experimental scientist slash politician, kinda, um, and we know very little about him. I mean, obviously, if you've read the blurb, you know he's a cyborg, but there's no indication of that at all. He's very astute. His martial arts are, for lack of a better word, laughable. I mean, it is hilarious. It's like a really shite, slow-down version of that movie that had Christian Bale. What was that one again, where they did all the, the weird martial arts... Um, uh, uh, fuck. Um, equilibrium, equilibrium. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of like equilibrium, um, where they're doing it's like tai chi movements uh, and mathematical equations, but with guns. And it's bitching in that movie. In this movie, it's clunky, slow, uh, with no guns, and it doesn't really make sense. And it is it is laughable, but it is so entertaining that it's difficult to take your eyes off it. But yeah, in this movie, he just shows up to kill this guy and doesn't do it. There's no real indication of who sent him, what he is. The narrative just doesn't exist, and then he goes on the run. And then we start piecing together some stuff. There's these scientists that have kind of programmed him at the behest of John Saxon, who, you know, doesn't like failure and sees this cyborg who, to be honest with you, he doesn't really know that much about, even though the 88 films blurb is like his prized possession. He doesn't really act that way. And yeah, they, they go hunting him down. Um, and our, our man Paco decides to lay low uh, in this bar, this dive bar in the middle of nowhere. But it just so happens they do arm wrestling competitions. So yeah, cue the over-the-top stuff, um, and I don't mean that things are over-the-top, I mean the movie, over-the-top. Uh, so George Eastman plays this guy called Raul, who is wonderfully scummy in all the ways that you hate these sort of villains. Um, and George Eastman is perfectly cast for this, he's brilliant in this movie. Just From the second he comes on the screen, you dislike this guy and you hope he dies horribly. Which he does, so we don't need to worry about that. He obviously is the current reigning champion. Uh, there is a guy who is um, 
like the historically reigning champion and his pictures all over the bar. But Raul finally managed to goad uh, Paco into an arm wrestle. He beats him and then he can't let this go. So meanwhile, the police are trying to track down Paco. These industrialists are trying to track down Paco. Uh, and Paco is laying low by doing arm wrestling. That's right, arm wrestling. So the following day, Paco's tricked um, and he's taken out into the, the desert and beaten up by Raul and his men. But what Raul's doing is basically trying to get him out of the way so he will default lose um, a match that has been scheduled against the, the reigning uh, historical champion of arm wrestling in this bar. Of course, Paco arrives in time. He also wins and secretly saves this guy who's arm wrestling's life. Uh, makes him okay and uh, it kind of helps him out. So, you know, it's like, um, it's like you kind of look at and go, that was very nice of him and it plays off later on. You'll find out why. Uh, so he wins that and then we're on this kind of dash towards the finish of this movie because we spent about 50 minutes of this arm wrestling and fifth in the round. So yeah, the the industrialist has more than just an army coming. They manage to coerce Raul into helping them. So he becomes part of the evil gang because we need that in 80s movies. It happens in lots of 80s movies. I always, always remember watching Nico and this guy who's just like a rat informant is there at the end when Nico's being terrorised. Um, I'm like, why is he here? Why is this scummy junkie rat informant with these CIA guys at the end of this movie to see Nico get tortured. Never made sense, but it's just what they did in the 80s. Uh, bit characters become villains at the end because we need to see bad things happen to them. And so Paco goes on the offensive, starts taking all these guys out, um, he gets hunted down, him and his uh, girlfriend, which, yeah, there's this whole romance thing with the woman that owns the bar, played by Janet Agron. Um, they send a female cyborg to kill him, who is like a stunt double for Dynamo from The Running Man. Um, she is like a shite fembot. She's like over the top, wearing perspex as a scut. Uh, and just like wonderfully weird and attacking him, glowing red eyes, a weird claw finger. Um, and Paco rips her head off and fucks it off a wall. So well done, Paco. Well done. We applaud you, sir. We applaud you. So we have that. Uh, we have this push towards the end where he's basically fighting off people it looks like him and his girlfriend might be doomed to fail and then this arm wrestler who he saved shows up to take her away to the hospital um, except his van gets blown up and we think that they're dead but she survives no word on the arm wrestler we assume he perished horribly uh, but she survives but Paco thinks he, she's dead so he's nothing to live for now so he goes in this violent tirade starts killing everyone um, and then eventually kills John Saxon uh, who is wielding the shittest laser gun you've ever seen so we throw all this into the mix uh, and then the police are there to basically bring him down tell him you know we know it wasn't your fault you can come with us etc 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 and um He's like, oh no, and then the, the girl shows up and she's like, I'm still alive. And he's like, no you're not, I saw you burn to death. But she makes her way and then she finally finds that he's a cyborg. And then, the if you've ever seen Cannibal Holocaust, at the end of Cannibal Holocaust, you have that great line of, you know, uh, you know who's the who are the real monsters? And you're like, that is profound as fuck. That's profound as fuck. And that's what this whole movie means. The end of this one, um, Paco's injured and you can see cybernetics and she now knows that he's a cyborg and he basically says maybe Paco never existed at all and then we get a quick thing that says after this point the use of cyborgs were outlawed and then we get the credits and that's the end of the movie and I was like what the fuck? what the actual fuck? because that didn't make any sense and it seemed a bit like they were trying to profoundly lecture us about the use of cyborgs uh, from the 80s it seemed very weird, very strange, and totally, totally weird. Just like out of left field. It's like almost someone couldn't work out quite how they were going to finish this movie. I mean, it's awful. The movie is absolutely awful, but it is entertaining as fuck. I laughed all the way through it, and I kind of, I, I would want to 
make other people watch this movie because there's bits that where I'm just like this is this is why Italian cinema died its death in the 80s because it went too weird too over the top and um, there was less money going around people were trying to do more ambitious things with less money every single time and it shows in this one and I, I feel kind of sorry for it I mean the action sequences are over the top nonsense the arm wrestling stuff shouldn't be in this movie but it's kind of great George Eastman's a brilliant villain uh, they did play in Paco as enthralling enough in that he is chiselled but there's nothing on. He, he, he's playing a cyborg that can't emote for a reason because I don't think this guy can actually emote um, the Simonetti score is fucking by far and away the best thing here like it is worth watching it just for the Simonetti score it is, it is brilliant, it is the height of 80s cheese and uh, Simonetti 80s nonsense I could listen to it on repeat, whenever it kicked in I was like here we fucking go um, it kind of reminded me a little bit of the Giver soundtrack if anyone remembers that it was really 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 good, really enjoyed that side of things like I say we've got some great villains, John Saxon is basically turning up for a paycheck and that is fine I'm happy with that, John Saxon, because you turn up for a paycheck means I at least get a bit of credibility. Uh, like I say, George Eastman is wonderfully over the top, slightly rapey, and like a terrible character who ultimately dies by getting his head crushed in a, in a way that I can kind of get behind and enjoy. So we had that as well. Uh, but it's not a great movie. It's not a great movie. It's got kind of A-team special effects when it comes to car crashing and things blowing up. It's not a great movie. Um, if I was to give it a Netflix grade, which I must on this show, it gets a 3.5. Somewhere between I liked it and I really liked it. A 3.5, but I will say this, it is one of the more entertaining titles we've covered thus far in the 88 Italian collection. Um, and I will watch it again and I will get people to watch it just because this would make a great drunken commentary. So I might what I might do towards the end of the year is I might spring... Um, an 88 films commentary on one of the titles uh, I might pick three titles, put them up in the group chat for you to to, um, to come back and, and vote on, and if everyone wins I'll find a couple of guests and we'll run a fun commentary Hands of Steel would be one that I would put forward for that because I think it would be a riot that and Blast Fighter actually might be, might be fun, in fact they would be a great double bill for anyone wanting a fun night in of exploitation cheese uh, put them in a nice sandwich and you're in for a good time.